Welcome back to my channel. I hope you all are doing well. Happy Mental Health Awareness Month. Today we are going to talk all about post-traumatic nightmares. I hope you guys are ready. I know I am. Let's jump straight into it. You guys know the drill. Like, comment, subscribe. Hit the bell for notifications of when I upload. And let's get straight into the discussion. PTSD nightmares or post-traumatic nightmares. Sleep is important to how you restore yourself. During this, your body and mind enter a state of relaxation. But when you have trauma, your sleep pattern and this traumatic event can lead to developing symptoms of PTSD, such as distressing thoughts, involuntary memories, flashbacks, and nightmares, which is what we're talking about today. In fact, 96% of those with PTSD have these nightmares as often as several times a week. But if they're living with other mental illnesses, this can increase how often they have these nightmares. The dreams themselves and the link between PTSD nightmares are unknown, but they all seem to be related to altered activity in the same region of the brain. PTSD changes the brain regions involved in fear, response, and memory recall, creating a state of hypersensitivity in the brain which causes an increased fixation on that event, keeping it fresh in your mind. So PTSD nightmares can occur during any point of sleep, but is most commonly seen during the late part of the night. What is interesting about these nightmares is that it can take any form when you're dreaming. You may not dream of the trauma that happened. These dreams may... No. <laughs> dreams. These dreams? They're nightmares. <sighs> Let me try this again. These nightmares may contain components only of the event or overtones of the experience. They can also merge different events together in a dream. For example, my PTSD um, is uh, from me being essayed. If you don't know what that is, I'll uh, put that on screen. But um, So it was, my nightmare is typically of that, the first time it happened. Long story, but um, so it, it, it happened more than once, we'll put it that way. But so I am starting to get where it's not just that, that dream. I recently had a dream where I was back home in New York because that's where I'm from. And I was walking down the street. I'm not going to tell you like the whole dream, but at some point I, I walked past my house where I lived. I was walking home from the pizzeria that was two blocks away. My normal walk, like, it, it was real, like, real, like, that That was actually where my, my old house was. There really was a pizzeria that was two blocks away, like, that was actually real. So I was walking down the real street, like, but it was in my dream, you know? When I got to the house, the house was a different house. It was a scary house like frightening like out of your nightmare house and the person who came out was this family member's wife who grabbed me and told me that I had to come in for dinner that uh this person hasn't seen me in a while and oh you gotta come in for dinner blah blah, blah and I didn't want to but said I had to and then after dinner she left for work to which I was left with that family member who did that to me to which it bled together like my dreams 
all of a sudden my happy dream where I was back home bled into my nightmare. So they became two different dreams, like two, two blood dreams. And I woke up panicking because all of a sudden, I, like, I was in a nightmare. Like, Anyway, I stated recently this, uh, but I wanted to tell you quickly that flashbacks are disassociative events or momentary lapse in perception of reality. You are back in the moment reliving that event. So this, like I, I talked about, in my recent PTSD questions, which I'll link in the description box down below. Not all flashbacks are visual. You, you can hear stuff, you can feel things like they like can actually feel, um, and, and you can actually see stuff. And then you get nightmare flashbacks. Um, so like for me, when I get flashbacks, I don't visually see anything, like, uh, I will hear things and, and feel things, um, so those are my flashbacks. And then I, I have my nightmares. So, the difference between PTSD nightmares and just regular nightmares, so I stated this in the PTSD, that, that same question video, that PTSD nightmares are so much more intense. They're similar to those flashback memories where you're seeing images and you are reliving that memory. Now, I do think it is important to express trauma that 60% of men and 50% of women will experience at least one traumatic event at some point in their life. In women, it is mostly, most likely going to be essay, unfortunately. And statistics show that in women, it's been showed that most of the women that they've, I don't, I never understand how they, they, they t like do their statistics, but statistics show that women are more likely to be essayed. <laughs> and men are more likely to have accidents, witness to death, and physical assaults. Side topic, you guys, physical abuse. I wanna talk about it real quick. Women, it's one in three. That is 35.6%. And in men, it is one in four, which is 28.5%. This is still trauma, okay? So yes, we next week will be covering what is going on between Johnny Depp and Amber Heard? But we are going to be talking about it in the stance of me being someone with BPD who has been, um, who has dealt with trauma. We're going to talk about the mental health points, um, uh, males being abused. We're going to talk about that topic. So next week, mental health and trauma look at the Step and herd case. I hope you guys are ready for that because I'm working on it real hard. So it's gonna be. So post traumatic nightmares are just a lot like sleeping flashbacks in a way. So back to post traumatic nightmares, or PTSD nightmares. Let's talk about treatments CBT and DBT, cognitive behavioral therapy, and dialectal behavioral therapy. This is working on the root cause, which is trauma. Working on that managing and the handling of the emotions and that stress and I, I hate saying coming to terms and accepting what happened because that's a difficult thing. Uh, but like um, DBT, I'll use for example, um, is like a, a management for different emotions you are going through, 
you have anger, there is a skill there you can use in place of when it's happening. When you wake up in an anxious um, pool of emotions, there is a skill there you can use um, to help wheel you back in. There's a CBT skill that you can use called grounding to help wheel you back in to bring you back down to reality. It's about keeping you mindful in the present moment to help keep you here and, and get you through to the next day and continue keeping you going. You know what I mean? Medications are the next one. I'm on a sleeping med because, well, I mean, I'm on something for my nightmares and I'm on um, an insomnia med. But, I mean, you can feel helpless from insomnia and sleep deprivation from the disruptions from the PTSD nightmares to the point that you may even dread or fear going to sleep. I mean, this can affect your, your life, your work, your social life. Um, your connections to people and it can turn into this cycle I talk about this all the time this cycle with like depression it and the cycle is so difficult and it, it starts with things like sleep disruption and once you start on the cycle it's hard to it's just like a wheel you keep tumbling I didn't want to go to bed so I wasn't sleeping but that's also due to a lot of things. I used to work night shift, but trauma. Um, so sleep pattern disruption and then trauma. We talked about that earlier. So I took something for insomnia. And then um, even taking something for my insomnia, my nightmares would wake me up. And so I had to start taking something for my nightmares. And it helps me to kind of not, I don't want to say not dream. I don't know if it like stops me from not remembering my dreams or, you know, what it really does. But he, he tells me like it, it helps with PTSD. So I, I don't know really. But it, it helps, like, I don't get my nightmares as often as I used to. I don't really know much about it. I should really like look into it but uh, definitely lifestyle change is important because it's not just one thing when you're trying to change things. Same with depression. It's not just medication. You gotta change everything. So lifestyle change is important. If you're afraid to go to bed, being on medication's a good start. But then creating a safe and comfy environment is important. Putting away electronics like an hour before bed. I like to use incense. I have my incense right here. Patchouli incense. I use them and I meditate like right before bed so it like calms me down, makes it smell good in here, I'm relaxed and everything before bed. It calms my mind, my body, everything. And I find like I'm calmer and relaxed before bed. I read places where they say you don't want to sleep in a too cold or too hot of a room. And then support systems are quite important because having a person you can go to talk to. I put this on the list because I felt like it was important. I know when I wake up from a nightmare, typically I'm alone because my family works night shift, but if it's bad enough, if my, if my like anxiety is bad enough and I can't calm myself, I know I can call my mom and she will help me calm myself. If I can't use my skills, I have somebody I can call. Your support system is there to help you. I have a video on support systems. I'll link it in the description box down below. Having somebody who is there to just listen, not going to judge you, fight about it, who who is just going to, who knows what's going on, who knows 
your triggers and things like that it's gonna listen and help you ease back that's some great stuff that's what I got for post-traumatic nightmares I know it's not too much but pretty much all I could find was all the stuff and it's everything I put into this video if you guys know anything else list it in the comment section down below Thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you guys stay safe and well, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.